This time we're going to be looking at dilations. So this is the fourth of the transformations that I've made videos for. The others that we've looked at so far have been rotations, reflections, and translations. In each of those other three types of transformations, after you perform the transformation, the whatever object it was that you changed or moved, it's always the same size. When you reflect a shape, it remains the same size. The reflected image remains the same size. The original image and the new image are congruent. When you rotate a shape, you rotate it from its original position, it does not change size. So the original image and the image after the rotation are congruent. The translation, if you just slide a shape, you're not changing its size. So the original object and the new image of it are congruent figures. Dilations are different. In a dilation, you will be changing the size. In both examples that I show you here, the center of dilation, just for simplicity, the center of dilation we will keep right at the origin. It'll just make things a little simpler. And if you forget what a dilation is, think about going to the eye doctor. The first thing the eye doctor will do when he or she is looking in your eyes is to put drops in your eyes to get that pupil to expand, to grow, to get wider. And somehow that allows then the doctor to shine the light in and see inside the eye to do whatever it is that he or she needs to do. Um, but the point is, is that your pupil, when it dilates, it is growing, it is changing size. So after a dilation, the new image will not be congruent to the original image. So what, what I have here is I have a triangle that I would like to dilate. I have the uh, vertices of this triangle labeled as A, B, and C, and I wrote the coordinates for those points there. A is negative 3, 2, or left 3, up 2. B is left 3, down 1. And C is right 3, down 1. So those are the coordinates of points A, B, and C. We're going to dilate this uh, triangle using a scale factor of 2. These dilations always have a scale factor. And what the scale factor means is what are you going to multiply by to get your new shape? In other words, if we want to uh, get, when we get the new image of this triangle after dilating, the new triangle will be twice as large as this original triangle because we will take this triangle and multiply it by two. So that's what a scale factor of 2 means. If the scale factor is 3, we would take this triangle and triple it in size. If the scale factor is 4, we'd take this original triangle and quadruple it in size. So here, the scale factor is 2. We're going to draw a triangle that is going to be larger. We're going to be doubling it in size. How do you handle that when you have a graph? So what we will do here is I'll take my marker and we'll look at each of these points. If the scale factor is 2, to get the coordinates of point A after dilating, we're going to take the coordinates, negative 3, 2, and we're going to multiply each number by the scale factor. Each number will be multiplied by 2, and that'll give us the coordinates of the new point A, also called A prime. So let's do that. So negative 3 is the x coordinate here. Negative 3 times 2 gives us negative 6. 2 times 2 gives us a positive 4. So when dilating this point at a scale factor of 2, we will get to this new point, which is negative 6, 4. Let's put it on the graph. So we start at the origin, and negative 6 means 6 to the left. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 4 in the y coordinate means up 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And there is our new point, A prime. So there's where A prime will be after doing that dilation of at least point A. We'll do the same thing for point B. Let's, the scale factor is 2. Let's multiply each of these coordinates by 2. 2 times negative 3 gives us, again, negative 6. 2 times negative 1 gives us negative 2. So those are the coordinates of point B after dilating by a scale factor 2. Let's plot this one x is negative 6, that means 6 to the left again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and y is negative 2, that means 2 down, 1, 2, and there is our new point B, or B prime.
And finally, let's do the same to point C. C is has a coordinates of 3, negative 1. We'll multiply both of those coordinates by our scale factor of 2. 3 times 2 is 6. Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. There are the coordinates. Let's gra graph it. Positive 6 in the x coordinate means 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 to the right. And negative 2 in the y coordinate means down to 1, 2, and there is our C prime. So now I can just draw in the triangle here. Draw it in just like this. And we will end up with our triangle, which has now doubled in size. Let's verify it. The original triangle had a base of base length of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 units. If we doubled this triangle in size, the new base should be 6 times 2, scale factor of 2. 6 times 2 is 12. Let's verify that this base of our new triangle has a base length of 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yes, indeed, we have doubled the size of our triangle, which is should be expected because our scale factor is 2. We have doubled it in size. So we multiplied 2 by all these coordinates, plotted the new coordinates, and there we go. So the scale factor, if it's greater than 1, we're going to be increasing the size of our object. What if we have a scale factor that is less than 1? What if our scale factor is 1 third? Well, let's give it a try. Let's do the exact same thing. As you might expect, if the scale factor up here, if the scale factor was 2, the new triangle is twice as big. If the scale factor here is 1 third, our new triangle will be only 1 third the size of the original. So here's our original triangle, A, B, C. It's a very large triangle. We're going to be reducing its size. Let's take this fraction, this scale factor, multiply it by our coordinates, and see what we get. So, point A has the coordinates 3, 6. So let's multiply each coordinate by 1 third, and we can get the coordinates of our new point A, or A prime. 3 times 1 third. Multiplying by 1 third is the same as dividing by 3. So 3 divided by 3, or 3 times 1 third, is equal to 1. 6 times 1 third, or 6 divided by 3, is 2. So point A prime will have the coordinates 1, 2. Let's plot it. 1 to the right, 2 up, 1, 2, there is A prime. Let's find the coordinates of B prime. Coordinates of B were 3, negative 3. We'll multiply both of those by our scale factor of 1 third. 1 third times 3 is just 1. 1 third times negative 3 is negative 1. Let's plot it. So, x is 1, 1 to the right, y is negative 1. 1 down, right there is our b prime. And finally, let's get point c. The original coordinates of point C were negative 6 and negative 3. We'll multiply both coordinates by our scale factor of 1 third. 1 third times negative 6 is negative 2. 1 third times negative 3 is negative 1. And so we'll plot that point. Negative 2, 1, I'm sorry, negative 2, negative 1 means we're going 2 to the left down one and there is our C prime. So we'll connect those and there is our new triangle. As predicted it is smaller than our original because our scale factor is one-third and we can verify the size of this if we check the original length of the base here from C to B the length is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine the base of our new one should be one-third of that length. What's one-third of nine? One-third of nine is three. So the length here is one, two, three, and it worked out. So our scale factor was one-third, and this triangle would shrink down to this smaller one. 
when the scale factor was 2, our triangle doubled in size, it grew. One final thing, how do you write the coordinate rule for something like this? If we want to write our coordinate rule, we've been looking at coordinate rules for all of the other types of transformations. Let's make sure we know how to write one for this as well. So our coordinate rule, if we have some general point, x, y, what will the new points be? Well, what did I do here? I multiplied the coordinates by 2 in this case. I did 2 times the x coordinate and 2 times the y coordinate. So any point, x, y, will become 2 times x and 2 times y. So you could, if you are using a dilation with a scale factor of 2, no matter what shape you have, any x and y will become 2 times x, 2 times y. So this would be the, the coordinate rule for a dilation scale factor of 2. How about a dilation with a scale factor of one-third? We start with any point x, y. How do we get the new coordinates? Well, what did we do for this problem? I took the scale factor of one-third, I multiplied it by the x coordinate, I took the scale factor of one-third, multiplied by the y coordinate. So, any point x, y will become the point one-third x, or one-third times x, one-third y. So though, that is our coordinate rule. That's everything you will need to know about dilations, at least as long as you are in my eighth grade math class. So, good luck. Hope this helped.